Welcome to Wacky Anime What If, Part 4. What if Issei was betrayed and got sea monster powers? So, the thing that happened is Issei made the old fallen angel church's base and was sleeping, sleeping, and, well, a little room he made. He did modifications. The outside still looks like an old abandoned church, but the inside looks like, uh, a normal household would look like. He made the entire front area on the inside, right when you walk in, made it entirely a living room. He did construction for a few hours, and the whole inside looked more like someone was living there. It looked more neat, but on the outside it looks like a whole wreck. It looks like an abandoned place. Which he intentionally didn't do anything for the outside, because he didn't want anyone walking across and seeing it was being renovated on the outside, and then them bring all of their fallen angels, angels, devils, and all of them to investigate. And Issei had placed a barrier around around the old abandoned church. Issei had just gotten up after doing all of this before going to sleep in the bed he just crafted, and he's thinking about what to do first. So he decides to go into the to go into the city for some details. He goes to Kohai and he dyes his hair completely black. His hair is already completely black. He looks like this in the image. Just remove the mask. They can't really tell it's Issei. No one can really tell when he walks into Kohai. They think it's a hot new transfer student. So, the females are trying to hit on him, and he just looks at them with disgust, and just walks forward. And he gives everyone the coldest stare, and people know to get away from him. He has that cool silent guy routine. So they all like him, they just don't know how to get near him. They all like his actual entrance, and how he's walking, how he holds himself with pride. No, no, no. Issei, he hates every one of them. Everyone from Kohai. He just walks, he just walks in, just kicks open the door to the front, to the front of the stool, just walks in, walks past everyone with all of their, like the girls literally have little saliva coming out of their mouth, because they look appetizing them. They look, they look exactly their type, basically. But Issei just walks all the way to the classroom, his old classroom, and he already forged an actual different identity and all of that. So there's no problems with this identity, and they already he already enrolled as a transfer student. So he uh, is outside the classroom door of his old classroom, and he knocks on the door, and. The teacher says, oh, I, I forgot we had a transfer student. Uh, welcome in, Ikazuki Hyoko. And Issei just opens the door, or should I say Ikazuki opens the door. He walks in, and he says, my name is Ikazuki Hyoko. And I'm just going to tell you all this up front. Don't talk to me, don't get near me, and... I'm offended to breathe the same air as you. And he just walks all the way to his original seat, which is right in front of Konako. Sits down, and Konako's about to try to talk to him, and he just looks at her with daggers. Konoko can feel the hatred emanating from him, and she doesn't know why. But Subaru calms himself because he doesn't want to give himself away. So he just uh, tells Konako, oh, I just don't like being touched. And, well, Konako just backs off and doesn't try to talk to him. Issei is constantly talking to Drake in his head while the class is going on, not even paying attention to the class. And the teacher doesn't really want to interact with him, because he has this aura that says, you try to, you try to fuck with me, you're going to get broken. Everything's going to be broken. Your neck is going to be gone. That's what the vibe he gets. Yeah. So... He just ignores it. <laughs> and Issei's just talking to Drake, and 
he's telling Drake, so what should we do? And Drake said, well, just continue trying to gather information. Though you're going to have to get close to the ORC club for this. And then Issei in his head scowls and says, I have to get close to those goddamn bastards. I don't want to get close to them. Well, actually, I do want to get close to them, just so I can crush them into the ground and show them where they were actually belong. Under my feet. And Drake also agrees with this, because they're both pissed off still. And that hatred has not died down in Issei for quintillions of years. Even though it was only one year when he got back, his hatred is still adamant. And, well, Issei, after the bell rings, is about to get up, and Konako is trying to spark a conversation up with him again, because Konako literally smells a familiar smell on him. And it's the same smell that Issei had, because Konako is a Nico, which, since Konako is an actual Nico, it, uh, they, she has a really keen sense of smell. So, she smells Issei's scent. So, she literally just asks him, why do you smell like someone I used to know, known as Issei Hyodo? And just her mentioning his name pissed him off. And he was literally about to decapitate her right there. Like, Konako could sense a little bit of actual, like, aura emanating from him, killing intent. And Issei's hand almost turned into his balance breaker. <laughs> Not even his balance breaker. Issei didn't know this, but his body is still going, undergoing a transformation. Nails were growing out of his actual fingers. And he was about to slash Konako's head off. And then Drake spoke in his mind and says, Not yet, partner. Partner, keep your rage under control. We have to get the right timing. You may be all-powerful and very strong, but you got to keep in mind, if you do too many moves or if you try to expose yourself immediately, all the factions can team up and still beat you. You can't beat all the factions together. Maybe you can beat one one whole faction by yourself, but not all three. And he said calms down and just put success killing intent back into him. And Konoko is really has the face that looks like she just already pissed herself. And Issei just says, it's probably because, well, I used to know him a while back, but he disappeared. And Konoko just uh, was in shock because she didn't know that Issei actually had friends. Or still had friends from what happened. And, well, she wanted to ask him more questions, but he said, also, I'm not interested in you in any sort of way. And Konako blushes, and he says, yeah, not at all. And I'm not interested in your prostitution services. They are not needed. And, like, everyone could hear him say this, and they're wondering what was happening in the back. And they're thinking that uh, Konako was trying to, you know, sell her body for money. And they're just thinking that was happening. And Konako's like, I didn't try to do that. And then the rumors already spread. Immediately. You know how rumors spread? They spread. Konako's a slut. Legit. Legit what they spread already. Because people were texting it, everyone while they were still talking. And Issei just left the room in the commotion. And he just went to the cafeteria. And when he saw the cafeteria food, he was like, no, no. That is complete garbage. I'm going to make it. So he goes up to the lunch lady and says, I'll make my own food. And she says, no, no, we're making the food. And then he just releases killing intent. Because, keep in mind, he was with three legendary monsters. Killing intent is natural for him. And he's been with them for quintillions of years. So killing intent is pretty much a natural thing. It's like breathing for him. Like, he can release it as easily as just breathing. And it does wonders, because she lets him use the 
the actual cafeteria. So, Issei goes in the back, he starts making his actual lunch, and Issei wants to have revenge, just in a little, so he offers to serve everyone else their lunches, and he he gets like a, he just says, wait, I gotta go get something though. He goes all the way to the nurse, nurse's office, he grabs the whole bottles of laxatives, and he pickpockets them. And the cameras are completely off right now because of maintenance in the nurse's office. Which he knows this. So he walks out. And he walks all the way to the cafeteria. And he's stirring the actual mashed potatoes. And he puts a shit ton of laxatives in. Like the liquefied laxatives. He puts all of it in them. And he just starts stirring it in. And whenever everyone appears, they start asking for their, uh, you know, for their food. And Issei serves them it and gives them extra mashed potatoes, which they're like, we love mashed potatoes. Like, most people like mashed potatoes in that school. And, yeah. You really couldn't taste the difference in it, though. Laxatives didn't have a strong taste. But, uh, <laughs> let me just tell you, the liquid lax laxatives... As soon as people started eating it, they had to go take a shit. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be honest, most people just shit on themselves. Immediately. And it was so embarrassing for the people that were eating the mashed potatoes. Because they didn't want their friends knowing that they literally shit themselves in the cafeteria. And Konika was one of the unlucky people that ha that happened to, because she got mashed potatoes also. But Issei put a ton of mashed potatoes on hers, and Konika was like, Maybe he's warming up, warming up to me. And then, as soon as she eats it... Yeah, that. <laughs> so, she has to literally go and get changed. And Issei is falling behind just to see if he can get any information. So, Issei follows where she's going to the ORC club to change. Because, well, the locker rooms and everything are completely closed right now. Because it's caf everything's supposed to be in the cafeteria. So, he's trailing Konika from behind. And she goes into the ORC. She opens the door. And she closes it behind her, but Ishii's already inside. He just snook in. And he's outside of the ORC club room now. He has his ear pressed against the wall. Not even pressed against. He's like leaning against the wall. And he can hear everything. And Konako's changing in there. And Rius is there too. And she asks what happened exactly. And she sees that Konako had just used the restroom on herself. And asked w what happened. And she said, I think that someone might have put laxatives in the mashed potatoes. And Rius was busting out laughing. <laughs> At Konako, because that was hilarious to her. And she ends up saying, Oh, uh, Konako, I also get, haven't informed you yet. We're having a meeting. We're currently having a meeting for, well, Cocoville. Because apparently Cocoville has arisen. And he is mostly just gotten out of jail, well, out of his incarceration, and, well, we don't know what he's planning. So, we need you to be vigil, and make sure that word of this does not go out to anyone, because only the Arborage and, well, Sir Zex, Azazel, and the Leviathan, and... Maybe Orpheus might appear. So, yeah, we honestly don't want any other factions to catch wind or the Norse gods, because Loki is working with them, which Loki did a, did somehow escape from the actual Odin again. And let's just go ahead and say, scene cut, Odin and Cocoville were already busted out by Issei. We're going to go to a flashback now. Issei, right when he got back, before he even went to the church, the old church, to use as his base? No, no. He literally went all the way 
to hell through a magic circle which he knew the coordinates to. And once he went there, he went up to the biggest stronghold. And, well, that's where Loki was being kept. Because the Norse gods were watching over him, it's just they couldn't keep him with them. Because he could easily have someone that's influential in where the Norse gods are. Because he's friends with some people, and they don't know who he's friends with. So they could just break him out randomly. They didn't want to take chances, so they trusted him with Sir Zex. So he's in this giant stronghold, which there's giant iron doors. It's like a castle, essentially. And you can hear screams of torment just coming out of the castle. Issa was just walking up towards it, and there was about one giant guard in front of the door saying, Who are you? And Issa said, Oh, I'm just the one that's going to kill every single one of your faction. And, yeah, your entire race. And he's like, Wait, what? And before he could even say anything, Issa just punched a straight hole through him, turned into Leviathan form. Literally just turned into his Leviathan mode with Drake, went into his Balance Breaker Leviathan form, and just started running straight through, busted the hole into the door, and there was thousands of devils armed to the teeth with sacred gears and all sorts of separate weapons. Some of them had chains, which they all threw around Issei. Issei was being bound by a thousand devils. And these chains were all around his body. And all Issei did was just move a single hand away. And he just slammed everyone on his right side to the wall. Which there was at least 50 people with chains on that one right hand. Yeah, he just slammed his actual hand to the side. And they all slammed against the wall. And they died from impact. Because it, it, it pointed them through the wall. And they slid all the way half like a half a mile away. And when they all saw this, they tried to disengage their chains. But no, they messed up already. Because Issei said, you know what, I have to test this power out anyway. So all the guards that were inside the building were already outside. And he said, I'm going to use this skill. World of Chaos, the world of the seas. Come to me and bring my enemies to their knees. He said this, and a wave of water, the entire world changed. It was like a whole dimension was appearing. And everyone was in the water now. Issei was completely gone. And some of the some of the devils were really confused about where they're at now, because this is not hell anymore. And all of a sudden, they started go, go, going down in the water that they were all in. They were starting to drown. Some of them were starting to get pulled down underneath by some creature. And Issei, whenever he uses this ability, it's a domain. It was from the Leviathan. He didn't just get the Leviathan mode. He got something similar to a domain from Jujutsu Kaisen. Similar to that. It's water everywhere. If you look upwards, you can see thunderstorms. And... It's completely dark in the sky. And the waves are violently crashing more and more. All the people are being pulled under. And one of the devils get a good idea and just decides, I'm going to go ahead and dip my head underwater to see what's dragging people under. He does this, and he sees a giant leviathan heading straight towards him. The only difference is this leviathan is completely pitch black with red crimson eyes. And... It has armor on. And it's roaring. And it just rips straight into him. There were thousands of devils in that sea. None of them survived. There was one that said, what, what the hell is that thing? And before he could even try to fly out the water, right when he did, all that happened was a giant leviathan hopped out of the water. And it consumed. It literally chomped the devil's legs off and the devil was still trying to fly away which is his upper half he looked down noticed his legs were gone he was like oh shit his blood loss was kicking in he started to fall the leviathan just rose upwards and chomped him into bits
he was chewing his bones and crushing him and devoured him completely. And just so you know, this was not Issei. This was an actual beast in his domain. Since Leviathan's soul, when it fused with him, he could form a mini Leviathan in that domain. And once the domain disappeared, he was on the ground in front of the stronghold, coughing profusely and coughed out a little bit of blood. Because he's not used to using this ability. And it drained way too much power. So, Issei just walked in the stronghold. There were, there were still some guards in, some stragglers. But Issei just slapped his hand into them. Most of them just exploded from just sheer power. And Issei just didn't even have his boosted gear out at this point. He just slapped them because they were low-ranked devils, honestly. The rest that were inside were the low-ranked devils. The actual outside were the strong devils in case anyone tries to break in. Yeah. Issei was just walking towards where he thought Loki was. And then he realized, hmm, what should I do to convince him? And he thought maybe if I induce enough nightmares into him and persuade him. And Loki was currently asleep because they put a spell on him for him to be in a coma. So, Issei just kicked down the door, saw he was in a coma because of a magic spell, and he thought this was the perfect time. He used his nightmare abilities and made it to where, in Loki's head, he was reliving every single defeat he's ever had. From the Barrage, from Rius, all of them, from the embarrassments, and from all the gods just siding with the devils, and for them to want peace in all of this, it was just nothing. He just didn't want that. He really didn't. And it was making him more furious. And Issei could sense his anger and let him out. And once he let him out of the nightmares, he just broke the magic circle with just a little bit of his aura. Just shattered that shit. Looked at Loki. Slapped him in the face, woke him up, was like, wake up, bitch. Slapped him in the face. And Loki woke up, looked at Issei, and was about to charge at him. But Issei said, I wouldn't do that. You want to end up dead like all those guards? And he just points behind him, and he can see exploded bodies everywhere. Entrails everywhere, all over the floor, all over the... All over the walls, all over the ceiling. And Loki was in fear because some of those devils were almost to Sir X's levels level. I say almost because while well, they were nearly a high ranked devil. And Sir X is, yes, a devil king, and he does rule over hell, most of hell, but yeah, no. He is not exactly omnipotent. But some of those devils had skills that literally rivaled him because of their sacred gears. And Loki just knew, I'm, I'm not going to step up to this man. This man will literally body my ass. So he asked what Issei wants. Issei says, I want you to go on a rampage. I don't care what you do. You're free. And he just teleports away. He just makes a magic circle and teleports away. Then he teleports to Azazel's stronghold where he keeps all the prisoners and he just decides why just release one person when I can release an, an entire barrage of the people that Sir Zex fucked over because he hates Sir Zex more than anyone else because he's the one that planned it so before he does teleport he ends up just telling Loki to release everyone in this prison, which Loki does do, because, well, Loki does not want to undermine him. He does not want the hands. Issei teleports to a Azazel stronghold, and when he does, let's just say there were a ton of fallen angels, <laughs> like, tons of them, and Issei's already tired, 
but he wants to get this done and over with. So he just releases his killing intent. And most of the fallen angels were fucking cowards. They just backed down. There were some stragglers that were like, I can go ahead and take him. And once they ran up towards Issei, they felt his pressure. And it was making the gravity around them, the near gravity from his presence. It made it to where the gravity is like, you get on your knees. This man is going to fold you. Which he did continue to do. He didn't even have his boosted gear out or anything. He just completely just did the one-two on like three guards. And they got folded. And when one tried to throw a light spear at him, all he did was catch the light spear. He threw it back with immense force. And it flew straight through him. It flew straight through his heart. And it went bouncing through the stronghold. And it destroyed half the stronghold. Like, half the prisoners inside of there were already dead, and half the guards were, just from him throwing a light spear back. Which, if you're thinking he's really overpowered, he is overpowered, but he's not going to be too overpowered. I mean, Sir Zex could do the same thing with just using his power of destruction, to be honest. So, yeah, he just walks in. No one wants to go near him because they saw that destruction. And he kicks open the door, and he's thinking, I hope I didn't accidentally kill Cocoville. And he asks the guard where Cocoville is, and he says, uh, he's, he's, he's down that hall. And he says, thank you. Now you can die. And the guard's like, wait, what? And before he could even finish his sentence, his head was gone. And he said, just walked down. And all the guard could see before he died because he's, he literally does not have his body anymore. And his last image you can see is Issei just walking away. And we go back to Issei. Issei is just walking to the end of the hall, kicks down the door, looks at Azazel, well not Azazel, I keep on getting confused, Cocoville, and says, you wanted a war, right? And Cocoville says, of course I do. I want a war that I can test my might in. I want to destroy. I want to pillage. I want to have the glory of a battle. And Issei said, alright, I'm just going to let you go and you do whatever you want. So, I'm going to break these chains that are around you and Kokoville's like, you can't break these chains and why would you want to help me? And Issei says, short story, I got betrayed. And I need you to cause as much chaos as possible. And he just breaks the chains like it's nothing. And Coco Veal couldn't even break the chains. Not even not even with all of his strength. Could not even do a dent in those chains. So Coco Veal is looking at Issei and notices just now notices his aura is huge. And his killing intent literally almost made Coco Veal have a heart attack. Because he was way too close to Cocoville when he broke those chains. Once Cocoville sensed it, almost had a heart attack right there. Then Issa said, oh yeah, one more thing, don't mention me, or I will kill you. And he just teleports back to the church, and that's where the flashback ends. So Issa, after school, because he was still in school, just went back to his you know, abandoned church and went to sleep. And this is part four. I may do a redo on this one later. Okay? So don't don't worry, this one's gonna get a redo later.